Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. Coming up on 5 million total followers, guys. Uh, so we've got our contest. If you can check that out, my pin tweet on Twitter. Uh, you guys have a chance to win when we hit 5 million total followers. We're getting very close. Uh, guys, my name is Ben. Every day on this channel, I show you how to make money in crypto. If you like money in crypto, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. And that helps you get into the contest. But guys, today, I got some major stuff I want to talk to you about. Uh, I want to answer uh, some stuff that I've been given, some questions from the XRP community that I've seen. Uh, we got a video on the XRP stablecoin white paper. Uh, I think later today, maybe tomorrow, not 100% sure on that, but it's coming very soon. Uh, the question was given from, God, I cannot remember the name. I think it was at Blackberry XRP. Um, but I'm going to be answering a question about why all of a sudden I'm trusting sources about XRP when I wasn't in the past. So I'm going to address that at the end of this video. I think it's a decent question. Uh, he made a little video and, you know, it was good. I liked it. So, uh, but first I want to talk about what's actually going on in the world right now when it comes to Bitcoin and really kind of the crypto landscape as a whole. You guys know we, we talk a good bit about the manipulation, the coercion, the banking cartel, everything that is behind the latest Bitcoin dumps over the last six to eight weeks. So this is what I want to ask you guys a, a genuine question about. Do you believe right now that we're seeing price manipulation? Think about it. What do you think? Do you think right now we are seeing price manipulation for Bitcoin? I'm going to say no, and I'm going to tell you why. So a few weeks ago, at the end of June, we had these futures contracts close for Bitcoin. I told you guys going all the way back to quarter one that that date would not be great for Bitcoin, that leading up to that, the price would dump. How do we know? Because we see that basically at the end of every quarter and the Bitcoin futures get bigger and bigger and bigger every single quarter, um, especially when things are bullish. And so you've got these big uh, in institutional investors, what they do is they, it's called banging the close, where they try to push the price down in order to, uh, you know, collect money from shorts and then cash out their, uh, you know, call or put options. So it's a little traditional investor stuff there. So we know we knew that was going to happen. Now, if you remember, following that Friday after, uh, I believe it was June 25th, following that Friday, I told you guys the manipulation was gone. Now it'll come back for sure, but the manipulation has been gone ever since. And you know what's funny? Ever since that date, we've not seen a move bigger than 3% or uh, bigger than $3,000 in one direction or the other, right? The price is pretty much stabilized between about $32,000 and $35,000. And I've told you guys that uh, my people are telling me that $32,000 for Bitcoin and $1,800 for Ethereum, these are the defensible points. These are where the uh, negative FUD manipulators pushing the price down, this is where they're meeting the most resistance. And they had a hard time pushing the price down. They actually wanted to push the price down well below $28,000 uh, at the end of June, but they couldn't do it. They could only get it back down to about $31,000. Then it popped back up. That $32,000 was defended. And ever since that, all we've seen is actual regular retail sentiment. We've not been seeing the negativity and the pushes down in the price by the heavy manipulators. Now, got to ask yourself, how is that relevant to what is happening right now on the market? And this is what I want to tell you on that. The fact is, what we're seeing right now in the crypto landscape, remember, we've got Cointel lie. You can't trust them at all as far as you can throw them, started by old Grisha Fishman, old Fishman. We've got number two, Coindesk, operated by the manipulators themselves, Digital Currency Group. Now, there's some okay writers on Coindesk. I don't, I, look, and this is where you got to understand, you got Digital Currency Group running the show, having a stake in all of these major companies 
Coindesk is one I believe they actually fully own. If I'm correct on that, it's it's not actually technically in their portfolio. It's listed on a different place on the side. I think they may 100% own CoinDesk or pretty close. I should probably know that information. Uh, but it's a higher it's a higher level in the digital currency group than simply something they're invested in. Like when we look at their portfolio for things like Brave Browser, things like Ripple, things like uh, you know so, uh, uh, the Graph, for instance. So when we're when we're looking at this. We know we can't trust the media, okay, when it comes to crypto. Some good sites out there, Decrypt is one of them for sure. Uh, I think the block is pretty good, I think. Um, so, but in general, we can't trust this information, okay? What is the information that's being pushed right now? Binance, tanking, regulation, uh, they're going to get shut down. Nowhere's going to accept them. Shut down in the UK, shut down in the United States, shut down everywhere, okay? That's the narrative. What's happened to the Binance coin price in the last week? It's actually up. Think about 5% or so. Let's look at all this government fund. Elizabeth Warren, uh, the, uh, the banking broad, as I like to call her. She says, what did she say? Oh, we're getting the SEC to the 28th uh, of July because we're going to crush Bitcoin and crypto. You got Janet No Telling Yellen over there at the G20 summit. Which, if you didn't know, the G20 or uh, the G20 Finance Convention is basically what it is. You got the finance ministers, the central bank governors. Also, you've got a similar meeting going on that is for the media, and that is happening in the United States right now this weekend as well. Coincidence? You got the central bank governors telling the governments what to do, and then on top of that, you've got a media meeting where all the media people are together. You cannot make this stuff up. Going on at the exact same time. So what's happening? You've got the central bank governors telling the, uh, you got the central bank governors, or they're doing a police hunt over here on the side of the road. Pretty interesting. Uh, but you got the central bank governors telling the governments what to do. They've got all the media together. So what? They're telling the media what to do at the same time. You literally cannot make this stuff up. This is real. This is going on right now. Uh, I think it's called the Allen, it slipped my mind. It's like Allen and Company meeting, something like that. You guys can look that up going on right now. Okay. So we got all these stories going on, all these narratives being pushed, and what's happened to Bitcoin? It's doing nada, nothing. It's just sitting in that same little pocket. So what does all this mean? The media narrative is trying to push Bitcoin down right now, sentiment-wise, but price-wise, they're doing nothing right now. The message is clear. They're trying to get the retail investors not to buy in more to Bitcoin right now through the media narratives, but the price is stabilizing as they prepare for this big push up later this month. Could be your last chance to accumulate at these levels over the next one to two weeks, but they don't want you doing that. They don't want you accumulating, swim with the whales, do what the whales are doing right now. Look at all the stats they're accumulating. So I want to follow up uh, with my question that I was asked about why all of a sudden, after years of... Now, look, I have never uh, destroyed Ripple, okay? I've never destroyed XRP. I've never uh, said super negative things about it. I've always been a little mad because I did make some money with it in 2017. Now, I wanted to see the price go up. I wanted to buy into the whole thing. And then, of course, uh, you know, th there are some things about XRP that I do not like. Um, number one, you know, it, it's not good when the company come out and says... Hey, you know what? We've got to sell our own coins to keep the company profitable in the bear market. That's not what you want to hear as an investor, okay? But why have I not bought into everything the XRP community has been saying for years, and now, all of a sudden, I'm listening? Well, it, it's kind of like this, okay? If you've ever talked to someone who's a Dallas Cowboys fan, okay, every year, they believe the Dallas Cowboys are going to absolutely crush it. And they're going to tell you every reason why. And you know what? Their information is good. They know their players inside and out. They know everything about their team. They know their coaching strategy. They know exactly what's going on. But I, I'm not a Cowboys fan. So they try to tell me that information. And I'm like listening through a biased ear, right? I'm listening. I'm like, yeah, you got some good people on your team. You, you've got a good defensive coordinator. Well, Maybe not this year, <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
they, they know the ins and outs. They're telling you about this, and they're telling you why they're going to be great. They're telling you why their schedule is easy, why their other competitors are not going to be as good. But you're listening to it, and you're like, yeah, but I can't take this serious. It's from a Cowboys fan. But you're watching ESPN one day, and you've got somebody who is a Cowboy hater, okay? But they're an NFL insider. And they come out, and they say, guys, look, I'm picking the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl this year. And you're like, what? You're, you're picking the Cowboys to, to go to the Super Bowl this year? And they rattle off all the reasons why. You can hear it from someone who's a fan, but it's not going to hit the same. When you start hearing stuff from someone who's neutral, someone who's unbiased, someone who has an overall view of the landscape and is telling you on a big picture scale why this information is good, it hits different. And so, yeah, guys, I got some sources. I got some people on the inside right now of a lot of different places. I've got several, um, you know, one in particular who has been dead on with so much of this information over the last six weeks that I've had to give it credibility. And so when he has been able to kind of show me the larger picture of what's going on and how not Ripple is, uh, not, not Ripple is the overall behemoth of crypto, but he's been able to show me where Ripple fits into the banking cartel and where they fit inside the digital currency group and in the moves that they're making right now that are some of the same moves that the XRP army has been talking about for a long time, but he's been able to give me context and perspective to be able to understand how it all fits together. And I guess the best way to say it is it just hit different and it opened my eyes to what's going on. And guys, I'm never going to come out here and tell you, even if, even if XRP were to make me a billionaire, I would still not come out and be super favorable about the things about Ripple or XRP that I don't like. I won't justify those things because it's making me money, but it sure does feel good. It sure does feel good. And it will, it will uh, feel good when uh, XRP is making people in my community rich, when it's making people in the XRP community rich, it's, it's going to be great. So um, I, I guess once again, the message here is swim with the whales, do what the whales are doing. And, and the whales have already accumulated XRP, to be honest with you. That's why I'm not that worried about XRP going on one gigantic dump. I would actually kind of argue, I don't know, maybe the SEC uh, entire lawsuit, maybe some people saw it coming and that was the accumulation point. A lot of people missed out when it went all the way down. God, didn't it go back down to 16 cents? It was extremely low. I wish I would have got a lot more during that time, but I'm sitting right now with about 200,000 XRP. Um, I, I'm really considering adding on to that a, a good bit. We'll see what happens from here, but uh, yeah. Uh, it's been really interesting seeing some of the comments from the XRP community. Someone called me the supreme leader of XRP. So I don't think that's necessarily uh, true, but uh, it, it, it did give me a good laugh. Uh, but we are putting XRP up as, uh, you know, now, look, I, I've shifted it. It is now a long-term hole for me. So, all right, guys, let me know what you think about all that. We got an XRP video coming out later. We got several videos coming out this week. You guys are going to want to check out. I'll be back tomorrow. Sunday morning drive, coming back in the morning. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.